Hello, my name's Eleanor and today we'll be looking at Lexis. I just want to remind you that my videos are aimed at the Edexcel exam board, but they can be helpful for people doing the other exam board specifications. So today we'll be covering what Lexis is, some key terms, and also how to use the key terms in analysis of text. If you haven't seen my word classes video, I recommend you watch that uh, as well, and that will contain some very helpful key terms which will be useful in analysis. So Lexis. Lexis means words, as in word forms separate from their meaning, because semantics is the study of the meaning of words. This may seem quite a sort of strange concept initially, but hopefully it will become clearer. In an analysis, you would need to comment on how the forms show particular things about the mode, field, function, and audience, or the genre, audience, and purpose for other exam boards. So let's look at some key terms. So firstly, slang. This is vernacular, um, colloquialisms, informal language. Archaisms, which are archaic, old-fashioned language. Abbreviations and clippings, which are abbreviated or shortened words. So, for example, fridge is a shortened or abbreviated form of uh, refrigerator. Neologisms, which are new words that have been created either by acronyms. So, for example, NASA is an acronym that created a kind of neologism. A blend of two words. So, for example, docudrama, brunch and glamping or borrowing words or learning words from another language. So for example, cafe, hotel, bazaar. Then monosyllabic or polysyllabic words. So monosyllabic words are words with only one syllable, whereas polysyllabic words have multiple syllables. They generally sort of correlate with informal versus formal language with formal language containing more polysyllabic words. Then cliches, that's actually also incidentally a learn word. So these are kind of overused phrases or words, but they are generally phrases. So for example, beat about the bush, beggars can't be choosers. Remember not to comment on the meaning of these, but the fact that they are actually used in relation to mode, field, function and audience. Then occupational jargon, these require specialist knowledge so they're kind of buzzwords, so for example, due diligence, streamlining the team, or even specialist terms such as phospholipid bilayer. Latinate words come obviously from Latin, so for example, relinquish, request, conceive, vocation, beneficial, those kind of words. They're generally flowery and polysyllabic and also tend to come with formal texts. And then formal versus vernacular, which we have discussed in relation to many of these other key terms. So vernacular being informal language. So now let's think about the mode field function and audience for the following hypothetical texts. I do not have examples of these texts, but it's a good exercise to do before analysing a text so that it allows you to think about things you expect and you can comment on things that do or do not appear that you expected. So the hypothetical texts are an appointment reminder text from a doctor's surgery, an academic up journal article, and a personal Facebook post. So things that I thought about in relation to these are, so for the reminder text, the mode is obviously a text message, which should be planned and automated via some kind of mail merge thing. The function would be a reminder or perhaps to inform. The audience would be the patient or client. For the academic journal article, the mode would be written, heavily edited and planned with a specialist field, the function being to inform or perhaps persuade, and the audience being specialists in that field as well. So, for example, colleagues, fellow researchers, uh, perhaps even students. And then finally, for the personal Facebook post, the mode is online, written, semi-planned, but mostly spontaneous. Function would be to inform or entertain, and the audience is friends and family, perhaps colleagues. You'll notice that uh, for the first one and the last one, I didn't analyse field, because field is generally related to semantics. So now let's apply those three texts 
and the mode field function analysis we've done to the key words. So firstly, mode. So for the reminder text, usually texts are spontaneous, uh, but this one will be heavily edited and planned and automated. But we're still expecting abbreviations, clippings, acronyms, monosyllabic words, because texts as a genre are generally short. This is partly because um, people at least used to uh, need to be careful not overrunning or exceeding character or word limits. Unusually for this genre, we do expect formal language uh, because of the planned nature of it and also because of the audience. For the academic journal article, this will be planned, heavily edited and reviewed. So we expect polysyllabic words and very formal language. And for the Facebook post, we said was online and generally informal and spontaneous. So we expect slang, vernacular, typos, perhaps monosyllabic words, abbreviations. For the field, the academic journal article was the only one I analysed in terms of field. We would expect a specialist field, uh, specialist words. So for example, archaic and Latinate terms, specialist language, formal language, some acronyms, which may or may not be explained depending on the audience, uh, and some polysyllabic words. Now for the function, for the reminder text, this was to remind or inform, so we expect formal language. The academic journal article, the function was to inform or persuade, and so we expect specialist terms and formal language as well. Personal Facebook posts are to inform or entertain generally, so again, vernacular, slang, neologisms for entertainment, but these kind of all closely linked with audience considerations as well. So for the audience, the appointment reminder text, the audience is patient or client. So this needs to be formal language, but also monosyllabic because it's trying to set a friendly tone perhaps. For the academic journal article, there is a specialist audience. So we expect specialist knowledge about abbreviations and clippings and other specialist terms, archaic terms, Latinate terms. These are sort of expected by the audience, but also the writer will be using them because they expect the audience to know about them as well. But the audience expects these terms in order to show the credibility of the author as well. And finally, for the personal Facebook post, the audience is generally friends or family, so we expect vernacular terms, informal language slang, monosyllabic words, perhaps some cliches and inside jokes. So that was some Lexis key terms and examples of applications. It is a very good exercise to go through the expected mode field function audience before reading texts using the information they give you. Uh, because as I said, in an analysis, you can pick up on things that you expected and were not seen, and equally those things that you did expect and you did see. You might want to also comment on anything unusual in this regard. So for example, the doctor's reminder text was not a typical text format. So it's formal rather than informal, planned and automated, not spontaneous, but it still will be short uh, and might also contain some abbreviations as well. And a reminder to go and watch my word classes video if you haven't already, uh, because this covers some key terms which will be absolutely necessary when analysing texts. So thank you for watching, I hope it was helpful, and uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Any comments or questions please do leave them below, I will be happy to answer any questions you have or any comments. But that's it from me and thank you for watching.